name's Ocelot. Big boss. You know who I am. A certain man gave me a job to do. Two, actually. First was to get you out of that hospital. The second was to rescue the man himself. You remember? Your partner, nine years ago, Kazuhira Miller. Nine years back, your private army came under attack by Cypher. You were considered dead. Until today, that is, when Cypher found you. And it's not just them. The whole world wants you dead. You'll have to join up with Miller. Build that private army of yours one more time. It's your only chance. First, we need to save Miller. He's in Afghanistan. Afghanistan? <laughs> what, you can't keep up with world affairs in a coma? Four years ago, the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. The Muslims are fighting back with Western support. Miller was training Mujahideen rebels when he was captured by the Soviets. The Reds 40th Army. Troop strength somewhere around 100,000. Squad holding Miller set off near the Pakistan border yesterday. Now in three days, they'll reach the Soviet garrison. He'll be interrogated for a few more days, and it's off to a logger. Or left to rot in a ditch on Afghan soil. I give him two weeks. The job didn't mean anything to Miller. He only took it on to keep you safe. Well, there's our ride. Whaling ship. Had a pretty good deal on her once the IWC started raising a stink. Now it's seven days to Port Kasim, another three overland. So we won't have much time once we're there. Don't take too long getting used to your new self. Hang on.
is under total Soviet control. Miller's been captive for 10 days. Not much time left. The weather will clear shortly. Storm's passing. Infiltration of the Soviet main ground forces. Should be the perfect warm up. <laughs> Kazuhira Miller is being held in Darwin Dehar to the north. Check its location now. Take out your iDroid. You see Wandy on the map? That's where they're keeping Miller. Only problem is, we don't know his exact location. Finding it is your first priority. Got your binoculars? Or should I say, your int scope? See the village? Straight ahead? To the right. All right, that's the village. If you see something through the binoculars and you need more information, just give me a call. I'll tell you anything I can about it. That's Vialo village, the Vialo Calais. The villagers fled the war and evacuated a while back. Since then, it's become a base for the Soviet's 40th Army. A few days ago, Miller was taken through there, en route towards Dewan Dehar. You may be able to pick up the trail there. It's worth a shot. Put a marker on it so you don't lose track of where it is. Marker Good. Placed. Now you won't have to worry about getting lost along the way. You can't have much left in him. I give him three days, Tops. If we fail, and he dies, we lose our chance of revenge. But we need more intel. If you just go charging into Doan Dehar, you'll be putting both your lives at risk. See what you can find out first. The Soviets have other outposts, not just the one you saw. Afghanistan is a big place. I expect you'll become quite familiar with those binoculars as you plan your next move. How and where you make it, well, that's up to you. From here on out, you're on your own. You're a legend in the eyes of those who live on the battlefield. That's why you have to handle this mission yourself. Put those nine years behind you. And return is big boss. That's how Koss would want it. I'll be sending additional intel by radio. Stay sharp. Not one of Miller's bodyguards survived. And they were good. All we found on the scene were their corpses and knees. You'll be missing them. And you're his only hope of getting them back. Now go! Let the legend come back to life. Yeah. 
binoculars. Put the enemy in the center of your field of view. Hmm. That's marking. Focus on the thread and it'll be marked automatically. You can mark enemies and vehicles by zooming in with your binoculars or camera. Once they're marked, you'll also see their positions on the map. Security and... Sight, sound, keep all your enemy senses in mind. When you're near an enemy, stay low and move slowly. Don't leave bodies out in the open. Find some place to drop them out of sight. Side, watch the enemy doesn't decide to use it. Same goes for hiding downed enemies in it. Guard post captured. They should come in handy sooner or later. Why not start gathering them? Planning to walk the whole wilderness on foot? Use your horse. You're almost at the enemy outpost, Violo Village. The village is crawling with enemy soldiers. Don't just go waltzing in. Start with some recon. Is there anywhere that overlooks the village? See the village from there? Use the binoculars to recon the place. Look at where the enemies are stationed. Look at their gear. Take it all in. There should be a command post somewhere. See any buildings with tighter security? If there are clues to Miller's whereabouts, I'll bet you can find them in there.
exact locations. You'll need to do a little intel gathering first. Take a look around Violo Village. Dumpster. Looks big enough to hide. It's somebody. You could stash a downed enemy in there, or hide in it yourself. Just don't stand too close to me afterward. antenna. There could be intel files of some kind in there.
Your suppressor is no longer effective. Bear in mind your weapon will be loud from now on. Sun's down already. It goes without sure. Keep your guard up, or who knows when you'll bump into an enemy. Shit. Arrived at Mother Base. Yeah. Yeah.
least one day. They've got Miller locked up in that town. Check your eye droid for his location. I hope to hell he's all right. He's not your average client. It's up to you whether to slip by enemies or take them down. Just remember that any situation can change fast. Familiarize yourself with your weapons and items while you can. You need to be able to switch between them quickly to meet any threat. target is. Head for one day. You don't understand what he said? Uh, I guess that makes sense. It looks like that uh, horn stuck in your head has impacted the language center of your brain. If only we had a recruit with a Russian interpreter skill, we could get by with simultaneous interpretation.
I'm here to get you out. Snake. They do something to your eyes? No, it's... It's just bright as all.
What took you so long? We'll talk, but not here. Extraction uh, arrived at Mother Base. You secured the target. I'll send the chopper to get you out. Make your way to the yard. Mission on your iDroid. Mission info has been updated. The age hasn't slowed you down one bit. Not so heavy anymore. That's a type of medicinal plant. Bring it back to base. It's sure to be useful sometime. Watch out. It's the skulls. Don't let them find us. Extraction. Whatever that mist is, it's all around you. We can't see through it. I'm changing the RV so it's outside the mist. Get over there. The chopper will be waiting. Caution. Watch it any further and you'll leave the mission area. Caution. You are about to leave the mission area.
unit that attacked us before. They came at us real fast in the same kind of mist. Our men, survivors from nine years ago, were wiped All out right. in minutes. Put Miller in. One, two minutes then. No mistake. If an obstruction of the LZ preventing me from landing, request immediate removal. Seychelles. That's where our new home is now. Hey. That was some operation we had, huh? Nine years ago. Carving out our own world. Making our own future. And they took it away. We were dogs, all right. Slinking around, out of sight for sight. Digging up whatever kind of dirty money we could find. You name it. We did it. You see this? Diamond dogs. Our new home. A phantom of our former selves. Triumph. Death. Out either. Yeah. I remember it all. Like a damn fiddle! Help me, Snake. Chico. It all ends soon, exactly as I've planned. No! Give my regards to your boss when you get home. Every night. 
night. I can feel my leg and my arm, even my fingers. The body I've lost, the comrades I've lost, won't stop hurting. It's like they're all still there. You feel it too, don't you? I'm the one who got caught up with Cypher. A group above nations. Even the U.S. And I was the parasite below, feeding off Zero's power. They came after you in Cyprus. Then Afghanistan. Cypher just keeps growing. Swallowing everything in its path. Bigger and bigger. Who knows how big now? Boss. I'm gonna make him give back our past. Take back everything that we've lost. And I won't rest. Until we do. Watch your mother base. have changed, boss. We pull in money, recruits, just to combat Cypher. Rubbing our noses in bloody battlefield dirt. All for revenge. The world calls for wet work, and we answer. No greater good. No just cause. Cause. Cypher sent us to hell. We're going even deeper. I know. I'm already a demon. Heaven's not my kind of place anyway. Dogs of war for nine whole years. That ends today. Now you're not sleeping, and we're not junkyard hounds. We're diamond dogs. Let them talk. We can crush Cypher, boss. And you can build the army that can do it. Just one thing, Kaz. This isn't about the past. We're fighting for the future. There's something I want to talk about. It concerns the running of Mother Base. Come meet with me. You came. This base belongs to you now. Make Diamond Dogs the force it deserves to be. Like any organization, we need good people. 
and we need to make good use of their talents. Miller asked me to lay that out for you. Start bringing people in. Use this. It's a Fulton recovery device. When you're in the field, use it to extract any soldiers or prisoners you want back here. And we'll see if we can't persuade them to join the ranks of Diamond Dogs. Go on. Test it out on the staff here. Anyone you want. First, put them to sleep. You have a Let's tranquilizer do gun, boss. don't you? Don't pull any punches. Out like a light. Now approach him and extract him. Good. Let's do Extraction it. complete. Arrived at you can only bolt and recover someone if they're not resisting. No dead bodies either. They don't make great recruits. The staff member you just extracted will be assigned to the team best suited to his abilities. See for yourself. Open your eye droid. Select staff management from the mother. So that staff member was placed on the R&D team. The R&D team is in charge of developing all kinds of weapons and items that will support you on missions. Take a look at the development list. Select weapons items under the development heading. Please specify That's the R&D team's development list. See the item called cardboard box? Didn't seem much use to me, but Miller was adamant that you'd want it on the list. The last word in infiltration technology, or so he said. In any case, we don't have the manpower to develop it just yet. We need more staff on the team. Go extract a few more people. Oh. You can also Fulton extract individuals you've knocked out. Why don't you try knocking someone out with CQC next? Show them how it's done, boss. Try throwing them. It's the best way to knock someone out instantly. I suppose that works, too. Good. Extraction arrived at Mother One Base. One thing I should mention. Molten extraction won't always be successful. If the person is injured, the shock of it could kill them. And if the weather's unfavorable, well... Good end going missing. You can determine the success by approaching the person you want to extract. We'll be sure you can get them out. Best carry them to the chopper instead. All right, extract the next step. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Select weapons items Unit under the development. Now select cardboard box and start added. development. Be aware that development requires fun. Development has finished. Please select a You can have the support unit supply requested. you with weapons and items you've developed. Think Supply of it as your own complete. personal delivery service. Development project has been added. <clears throat> Go for them, not me. And there it is. Not sure what it's good for, but Miller said you know what to do. Try it out. One last thing. The staff members you extracted were all placed on the R&D team, but that was Miller's decision. If you think they belong somewhere else, you're free to move them around. Well, that about does Position it. Info you won't make any GMP updated. or find recruits hanging around here. Board the chopper when you're ready for a mission. Open your eye droid and select a landing zone to tell it where to pick you up. Or if you're still in the mood for knocking guys on their asses, you can stay around here a while and give the men some practice. Just come pay me a visit. <laughs> Speak. 
Good. Extract the staff member. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Strike an adversary repeatedly to knock him out. He'll stay in contact. Go on and extract him. Strike an adversary repeatedly to knock him out. He'll stay unconscious for longer than if you throw him. Extraction like arrived at Mother Base. The rest will fall into place with some time in the field. Go ahead and call the chopper from your eyes. Arrived at the motor base. Please specify a project. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Development project has been added. Mission is updated. Boss, I know you haven't been back long, but I've prepared a list of missions for you. Open your eye droid. Please select a mission. I've taken the job offers Diamond Dogs has received and made a list of those I want you to consider. Which ones you accept is your call. The objectives of the missions I've added are prisoner rescue, Facility sabotage and high value target elimination. Probably all a walk in the park for you, but they should help you get back on your feet. I put the mission details on a cassette tape. 
Refer to it if you decide to accept the mission. We'll receive GMP for completing missions, and extracting soldiers and prisoners will boost our ranks. Building up Mother Base is the first step to achieving our goal. If that means wet work, so be it. We're gonna have to get our hands dirty. I hope you're rested up, because we're not stopping. Not until the pain is gone. The future of Diamond Dogs is in your hands. We're counting on you, boss. You were hospitalized in Dekelia, a British sovereign base area on Cyprus. It's part of British overseas territory that falls outside of Cypriot jurisdiction. You got moved from Cuba's little America right into Cyprus's little Britain. Why Dekelia? The UK and the US remain close allies. The last place Cypher would think to look for you is inside their own system. That's what kept you safe in British military hospital for nine years. The safest place from a whale is inside its own belly. You were a regular Geppetto. Well, it wasn't Pinocchio who led me out to safety. So who was that guy? Cypher went so far as to attack British territory, burning their own ally. That's how badly they wanted you dead. Said I was in a British military hospital. But the doctor had a Greek accent. They hire locally. Easier to trust them. De Kelly is also home to Greek Cypriots, after all. What about the Turks? They haven't returned to the south. Not yet. The Cyprus dispute is still a long way from resolved. The country is just as split as it was in 74. Turkish Cypriots in the north, Greek Cypriots in the south. Between them, the Green Line, the UN established. And the Calia sits right on top of it. It does. Part of the buffer zone between the two groups. Another reason it was the perfect place to hide you. Easy to spot any outsiders snooping around. So how do things stand? Now, last year, the Turks declared that the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is an independent state. Though it's only Turkey that recognizes it. In the past, the Greeks and Turks lived side by side in the same villages. There are reasons to fight. Those came from the outside. Greece, Turkey, Britain, America. They all had their own stake in pitting the two sides against each other. But once you spark something like this, it's impossible to control. Both sides build up grudges like debt, without the foresight to see that each act of revenge just fans the flames, and then it's too late for other nations to rush in with peace talks. The embers keep on smoldering. Each nation's arrogance only breeds anarchy. The world is paralyzed by this hunger for revenge. Cyprus is no different. Ships. But we can't go sailing the Suez in a whaler. The Suez Canal. When did they reopen it? Not long after you were attacked. Once they finished sweeping it for mines after the Arab-Israeli conflict. Can you stand? <sighs> we're gonna transfer to a container ship for passage through the Suez. Our destination is Pakistan, Afghanistan's neighbor to the south. There we disembark and head via Peshawar to the Zero Line, the border. We'll travel to the Khyber Pass by road. And then? We continue on horseback. Afghanistan's main roads are under Soviet control. We'll need to go around them. It'll be all narrow, winding paths through the mountains. We'll do better on horseback. It's a local guerrilla tactic. They use the higher ridges to avoid air recons. Then they charge down the mountains for ambushes. The Soviets still haven't devised a counter strategy. Our time frame is only half as much as we really need. Gonna be a tough march. Better horses than boats. Well, it'll make for good physiotherapy. Take the time to get used to that new arm. While the Soviets have indicated they are not participating in the Los Angeles Olympics, primarily because the United States has made no attempt to guarantee the safety of the Soviet Union's athletes, the United States is increasingly demonstrating the belief that the issue has nothing to do with its preparations, and in fact this is retaliation for the Western nation's boycott of the previous Moscow Olympics. That concludes today's news. That's quite some news. The uh, Soviet Union not attending the LA Olympics? Yeah. Andropov's death has changed some things. They're calling it revenge for the Western boycott of the Moscow Olympics. Countries boycotted the Moscow Olympics? Yes. 
In protest of the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan, over 50 countries were absent. It's too bad I didn't get to see Yamashita's judo. When the 40th Army crossed the Amu River four years ago, detente went right out the window. The U.S. Congress chose not to ratify SALT II, and Reagan's hardline politics won in the presidency in a landslide. According to him, the Soviet Union's an evil empire. <laughs> the Second Cold War. And there's been no end to regional conflicts and civil wars. Lebanon, the Falklands, Grenada, Iran, Iraq, the story never changes. Egypt and Israel did sign a peace treaty, but then the driving force on the Egyptian side, President Sadat, was assassinated afterward. Apparently, his actions were considered a betrayal of his fellow Arabs. Islamic extremists? Yes. Fundamentalist extremists have been responsible for some bold acts of terrorism in recent years. We've had extremist students in Iran take U.S. Embassy workers hostage in suicide bombings in Lebanon. Over 300 foreign soldiers stationed there have been killed. The countries have yet to develop an effective means of dealing with terrorism. Afraid of losing their own men, they've pulled their forces out, handing private forces a golden opportunity. Private forces? Small armies with no national affiliation, working for the highest bidder. That's right, they got the idea from you. After Mother Base went down, they began spreading to meet the soaring demand. Miller's organization is just one of many PFs now. The entire world is after you. But at the same time, it needs you too. Miller told me about what happened in the Caribbean nine years ago. You do remember Miller. You'd formed a private army with him. An army with no allegiance to a nation. I remember, but... I see. You're not sure what's fact and what's a fantasy caused by the coma. It's still all a mess, huh? All I can do is tell you the facts as they were told to me. I've gone easy on you up until now, but this is where the hard stuff begins. <sighs> 1974, the year before you entered your coma. You were in Colombia, operating with a small unit of men, basically mercenaries. Miller was among them. Miller was trying to find a way to turn his and your talents into a line of work. He was looking to start a business where you would fight on behalf of others around the world, those who needed military force. But the reality was, at that time, you didn't have enough gear to equip your own men. Then Miller came across this client. It was a huge job he was offering, but you had a shot at pulling it off. You accepted it and headed into Costa Rica. The client even threw in an offshore facility in the Caribbean. The mother base. That would be your new base of operations. Miller sure did have a head for business. As your mission went on, your unit grew and grew. More weapons, more money. Before you knew it, you are commanding 300 men. As the organization got bigger, your military power swelled to match. It got so the international community couldn't afford to ignore you. You were just too damn successful for your own good. You, your men, had worn out your welcome. Everyone was out for you. East, West, First World, Third. It was only a matter of time before someone took you down. And that was XOF. Officially, they're an anti-terror unit under the CIA. In reality, they're Cypher's private strike force. They lured you to Cuba using Chico, the Nicaraguan revolutionary kid, and Paz, a mole who worked for Cypher as bait. While you were gone, XOF, posing as a nuclear inspection team, stormed Mother Base. At the same time, C4 they placed on the strut legs went off. The whole thing went down in minutes. XOF. Kisses and hugs followed by a big F U. All because of Miller's blind spot. A back door into Mother Base no one suspected. You remember a certain scientist? Huey was responsible for bringing the inspection team on board giving the enemy a perfect opportunity to hit you at home. You were returning from Cuba when it happened. Mother Base came damn close to taking you with it into the Caribbean. Those of your men out on assignment returned right away. They refused to believe the wreckage in the water they found was Mother Base. But they checked the coordinates again and again until reality finally settled in. You were supposed to die that day. That was XOF's primary objective. As far as most folks know, 
you did. The first doctor to see you wasn't even sure what he was looking at. Before they'd even finished operating, your men moved you to that hospital in Cyprus. It was a woman named Eva who arranged that. Rings a bell, hmm? Most men in your condition would have been written off right from the start. But you survived. You went straight down to hell, and they pulled you out. Your eye wide open. Full of venom. The days of Naked Snake are long gone. Welcome back, Venom Snake. This world still needs you. Your Snake, try this on. A prosthetic arm. Yeah, Miller was calling it the arm that wasn't there. The physiotherapy's going well. Your arm's bulked up enough for it to fit. There. Perfect. A little time with it, and it'll work better than the real thing. What do you think? Huh. I can still feel my real arm. Well, you better get used to this one quick. You have any pain? Every now and then. Where? My fingertips. My left fingertips. Uh, sounds like phantom pain. Your brain still remembers your old hand. Yeah. What about your vision? Can you see okay? Yeah, at the moment. Now, the shrapnel in your skull is pressing on your optic nerve. I'm told any hard impact could have an effect on your visual cortex. Yeah, the doctor mentioned that. Your brain might process visual information incorrectly. In other words, you could have hallucinations. You might see things that aren't there, or not see things as they really are. You experience any of that? I think so. When? Right after I wake up. Colors look faded. Colors, huh? Well, that's not a major concern in and of itself, but it could mean the difference between life and death in the field. You'll need to watch out for that. I will. All right. You should continue your physio. We'll be arriving soon. It's the last chance you'll get. Ocelot. I hear they started calling you Shalashaska in Afghanistan. What's that about? <laughs> you know the term Sharashka? It's slang for a suspicious, hastily thrown together organization. The word became associated with a type of forced labor facility in the Soviet Gulag system. OKB scientists and engineers who'd been convicted of crimes were sent to a Sharashka for forced R&D. The Sharashkas were supervised by Lavrenti Berea of the NKVD, the secret police, under the official name, 4th Special Department. Forest research? That's not very different from what we do here. <laughs> Diamond Dogs is different. Everyone here believes in you. Regardless of where they came from or why they're here, they revere you. And they're fighting because it was their choice. And if it wasn't, they'd leave? Who knows? That's our reality here whether it's real or not. If there's another truth, I don't want to know it. All that matters is that's the concept that's taken shape in their heads. The traces of a group ideology, our superstructure, to put it in Marxist terms. All right. Go on. Right. So anyway, at some point the enemy started calling me Sharashka. This was after the war in Afghanistan broke out. While I was keeping an eye on you in that hospital, I was also heading up interrogations here. The men I broke gave up their comrades and families everything they wanted to protect the most. No real cause for it. I just let myself get caught up in the old Russian pride. And suddenly I received the honor of becoming special interrogation advisor to the forced labor camps. But the more men I interrogated, the more people saw me as just that. The interrogator. It helped cover my real objective of keeping you safe. You went that far for me? Far enough to keep you alive. I ended up being pretty well known among the Afghan guerrillas. Some of them would have seen me on the battlefield. And that's how I got the second half of the name. Shashka. It's a sword. A type of saber from the Caucasus. Russian dragoons and Cossacks carry them into battle. Now, the Russian Empire had a general by the name of Fyodor Arturovich Keller. His bravery earned him the nickname Russia's Greatest Shashka. Someone must have known about that, because somewhere along the line, Shashka got stuck on the end of Sharashka. The guerrillas were using the name amongst themselves, and by the time I got to hearing about it, the pronunciation had wound up as Shalashashka. So, half Gulag, half Hero's sword. It was a perfect fit. 
But you see how rumors and ideas about people can get out of hand fast. Once you create a character and put it out there in public mind, it warps and twists with every baseless rumor. And before you know it, all people see are phantoms. In my case, it works out just fine. I'm plenty used to working under aliases. So Salt 2 still hasn't gone into effect. That treaty was drawn up to limit not just the size of the US and Soviet Union's nuclear arsenals, but also their delivery systems. The whole deal. That's when we thought all those years of negotiations had paid off, somebody decides to invade Afghanistan. The timing couldn't have been worse. The president was in the middle of the Salt 2 talks back then. Oh, you mean while you were busy trying to stop Peace Walker? I heard. President Ford was meeting with the General Secretary in Vladivostok. In his absence, the political brass in America detected what they didn't realize was false nuclear launch data from Peace Walker. They were on the verge of ordering a retaliatory nuclear strike. Coleman's big idea? Humans are incapable of destroying themselves. Turns out he never knew what humans are capable of. If that AI, I mean, the boss, hadn't found a way to stop the fake data transmission, they probably would have gone ahead with the launch. Deterrence was revealed as the pipe dream it was. All thanks to you. And her. The U.S.-Soviet talks looked set to fall through. What happened in Nicaragua no doubt helped trigger a change of heart. But in the end... The times define the politics. When you grab their tail, they turn and bite your hand. I first met you 20 years ago now. The place was Selenuyarsk in the Soviet Union. We were enemies. I was with the Gru. You were still fighting for America. 1964. Operation Snake Eater. Its objective? The assassination of the legendary soldier known as the Boss. When you returned home successful, they awarded you the title Big Boss. Your CO, Zero, sought to carry on the boss's will by covertly establishing his own organization. You knew the original members from Operation Snake Eater. From America, there was David O, or as he was to you, Major Zero. Donald Anderson, AKA Sigand. Dr. Clark, who went by a paramedic during the operation. And the fourth, you. From China, there was Eva. And me, Ocelot, from the Soviet Union. Six in total. To us, government notions of friend and foe were meaningless. As were East and West, we joined forces by our will alone. Our objective was to fulfill the boss's dying wish. To make the world one. And to do it, Zero used the Philosopher's Legacy, the secret war fund you obtained during Operation Snake Eater. This organization would go on to become... Cypher. I, on the other hand, was left with the problem. You only recovered half of the legacy. I had to locate the other half myself. When I found the funds, I passed them on to Zero, just as you wanted. I still trusted him in those days. We thought what he was doing was the boss's will. Until he started that one project. Les enfants terribles, Zero called in. You parted ways. As did Eva, leaving only Anderson and Clark still with him. I maintained limited contact. Although, truth be told, we were just keeping tabs on one another. The reason was always you. After you returned to the army and created Foxhound, you left America. For a time, even I'd lost track of you. I'd imagine Zero did, too. You always were the best when it came to hide-and-seek. Zero created Cypher, an information network to tap into every corner of the globe. Woven together, Cypher's arteries make the world just one big organism. And that's not all. It also monitors the thorn in Zero's side. That's you, tracking your coordinates wherever you might go. The further you strayed from your roots, the larger Zero became. It's as if he was trying to close the gap between you. But before long, he disappeared from public life. Only a few people had direct contact with him. For a time, I was one of them. Then a year after you fell into your coma, he slipped out of sight entirely. Since then, nothing. 
No photos, no recordings, not even a reliable rumor as to his whereabouts. I tried every method I could think of, but Zero was gone. Freed of his control, his creation, his power continued to grow. Cypher is a great beast, and Zero was its spine. But even without him, it's endured. Evolved. But now its body is rotting, riddled with parasites. Parasites like the ones who attacked you nine years ago in the Caribbean, and then at the hospital. Cypher's Black Ops Unit, XOF. They learned where you were and came to wipe the slate clean. Christmas Eve, 1979. The Soviet Union rolled into Afghanistan. Muslims had revolted against the Soviet-friendly regime established the year before. The DRA forces could no longer contain it themselves, so the Soviets went in to intervene. The Afghan government was powerless and fraught with infighting. They lost the hearts and minds of the people, and that alarmed the Soviet leadership. With the Islamic Revolution happening in Iran, the Soviets felt they had to act fast or risk the spread of Islamic revivalism. A superpower sending a motorized rifle division against men on horseback with antique rifles. Everyone thought it'd be over in an instant, only it wasn't. Some Muslims made their fight a jihad, a holy war, and began a guerrilla campaign on all fronts. A war of attrition. These fighters call themselves Mujahideen. They're being supported by the West through Pakistan. That's why Miller was involved. He was training them near the Zero Line, sponsored by the CIA. The war has become a nightmare for the Soviet troops stationed here. They thought they'd be headed home in six months at the most. Then a year passed, two years. Now here we are four years on with no exit in sight. Afghanistan has become the Soviet Union's Vietnam. The Soviet troops on the ground want to go home, but at least they have homes to go back to. The Afghans have lost theirs. The Soviets destroy the Kishloks, villages, wherever they can. They burn down homes and fields, fill in wells, turn pastures into minefields. It's created a mass of refugees who fled to Pakistan. If the Mujahideen are fish swimming around the villages, the Soviets will go so far as to dry out their ocean. But this has had a big price. There's bitter resentment among the Afghans, and they're taking out their anger on the soldiers on the front lines. Among the Mujahideen are the Pashtun people. They're fiercely devoted to their code of Badal, or revenge. Soviets they've captured have had their hands, feet, and noses cut off before being left to die at the side of the road, just to show their comrades what they're capable of. Friendlies who come across them can do nothing but put them out of their misery. Then they burn down another village in retaliation, and the cycle of vengeance goes on. Snake, I wanted to ask you about the man on fire. What do you remember from the hospital? Anything we can use? Well, he took off the moment the sprinklers started up. Sprinklers? The fire system? And when he got sprayed with water from the burst pipe, it slowed him down. When we escaped on horseback, he wouldn't cross the river either. And then it started to rain. And he disappeared. Water against fire. Is it that simple? I mean, it makes sense. It's just hard to believe it would work on a guy like that. <laughs> 